Welcome to the Economist in Your Ear podcast. Have you ever wondered what's really going on behind those flashy tech announcements, especially when it comes to something as complex and, well, rapidly evolving as artificial intelligence? We're talking today about OpenAI's latest model, GPT-5. It just had this big unveiling, uh, felt almost like a new iPhone launch, you know? Right, a lot of fanfare. Exactly. And the economists weighed in pretty quickly, describing it with a phrase that stuck out to me. An update, not a revolution. Mm -hmm. A pointed phrase. But here's the question we want to tackle. Is that the whole story? Is it just an update? Our goal today is to go beyond that surface take. We want to peel back the layers on the claims, mm. um, dig into what's actually new, what might be getting simplified, and maybe most importantly, what questions we should be asking. Especially given the context, right? OpenAI chasing that huge, what is it, $500 billion valuation? Yeah, precisely. And AI is just weaving itself more and more into everyday life. So the stakes are pretty high. OK, so let's start by unpacking that update, not a revolution idea from The Economist. They highlight how GPT-5 is being framed as this unified model. Unified, meaning it handles everything. Yeah, supposedly everything from like quick answers to really heavy coding tasks. The article even suggests some everyday users might now be bumping into Frontier AI for the first time, maybe without even realizing it. But what does unified actually mean here? That's a that's a really critical point, because what's fascinating is that unified, while true from you know, the user side, you type something, you get something back. It kind of hides what's going on underneath. Okay. The internal system, the actual GPT-5 engine, it's not just one massive AI brain doing everything. Our sources show it's what they call a routered unified model family. A router dot family. Okay, break that down. Think of it less like one super brain and more like... Um, a team of specialized AIs, all working behind that single interface. So inside you have different submodels. Like what? Well, there's GPT-5 main, which is apparently for the faster, more efficient responses. Then there's GPT-5 thinking for the more complex reasoning jobs. <sighs> oh. And even within chat GPT, there's apparently a thinking pro setting that uses even more compute power for really tough queries. Mm -hmm. And coordinating all this, there's a real-time router. A router. Like for internet traffic. Sort of, yeah. Okay. It looks yeah. at your request and decides, okay, which specialist model is best for this job? It routes the query. That's actually a really important difference. So it's not one giant leap in a single model. It's a whole system design. Exactly. A system. And why does this difference matter so much? Well, the internal details we've seen point out that this routing, uh, it isn't perfect. It can fail. Fail how? It might pick the wrong submodel, or maybe it doesn't give it enough computation power, the wrong budget. So imagine you ask for complex code, but it routes you to the quick answer model. You get a fast wrong answer, like asking a sprinter to play chess when you needed the grandmaster. Precisely. And think about benchmarking this or reproducibility for researchers outside OpenAI. Right. How can you reliably test GPT-5 if the underlying router keeps changing its strategy? The model you test today might behave differently tomorrow. That's the challenge. The unified feel for the user is you know, a neat simplification. Mm. But underneath, it's this complex, dynamic system, constantly shifting, potentially. OK, that sheds a lot of light on the architecture. Now, let's shift gears to performance. The Economist mentions research from METR. Mm -hmm. The AI Progress Lab. They show AI capability doubling roughly every 200 days. And GPT-5 seems right on that curve. Apparently, it can now handle tasks that would take a human maybe, what, over two hours? Yeah, which is a huge jump from just a few years ago. Back in 2019, something like GPT-2 was struggling with tasks taking humans literally two seconds. It's incredible progress, and it naturally leads to that huge question, what about AGI, artificial general intelligence? The big one. The article suggests maybe AGI in just a couple of years, and even super intelligent models not long after that. That sounds dramatic. It does. And this is where we need to be careful about interpreting those benchmarks. While MDR's trend is really compelling for showing how AI tackles tasks over longer time horizons, especially software research tasks, right. it doesn't automatically capture all the real-world messiness. Does that make sense? What kind of messiness? Things like uh, reliability when it's deployed everywhere, not just in a lab, the actual cost to run these massive computations, and just everyday workflows. How easily can things get derailed by those routing mistakes we talked about? Ah, hard. Or, you know, the tools it uses being brittle yeah. or hitting limits on power grids or getting enough GPUs. So jumping from it can do a two-hour task in the lab to it could replace a whole day of human work everywhere. 
It's plausible, but maybe not a guaranteed straight line. Exactly. Lab performance isn't always the same as real-world messy performance. Which brings us, inevitably, to safety. With these capabilities ramping up, concerns are too. The Economist notes groups like the UK's Ada Lovelace Institute. Yeah, a prominent voice. They're saying GPT-5 makes regulation even more urgent. And another group, the Future of Life Institute, raised alarms about OpenAI may be chasing recursive self-improvement. RSI. That term RSI, it sounds quite science fiction-y, doesn't it? And yeah, alarming. It does. What's the reality there? Well, what's really interesting is the context that seems missing in some of that framing. Safety concerns, absolutely valid, extremely important. But the background info we have clarifies that RSI, this idea of the AI improving itself autonomously, that's not what GPT-5 is doing right now. Okay, so it's not Skynet yet. Not yet. The model is still trained by humans. It uses that router system. It acts as an agent using tools like browsers or code interpreters, but it's not rewriting its own fundamental code, not in that recursive way. So where do the warnings come from? They often seem to be what you'd call policy extrapolation, projecting forward, Damn. meaning the concern is that as these models get more capable, especially at coding and acting autonomously being more agentic, they can make future RSI-like scenarios more plausible or closer but it's about the potential future trajectory, not a feature of GPT-5 today. That's a really important distinction. It's a future worry, not a current reality of the tech itself. Right. And interestingly, OpenAI's own launch materials seem to push back against the idea they're just ignoring safety, don't they? They do. They talk about implementing stronger safety instrumentation. Yeah. Things like uh, deception monitors to check the model's reasoning process. Ooh, deception monitors, yeah. wow. And a shift towards what they call safe completions, especially mm -hmm. for sensitive topics. Think biotech, cybersecurity, these dual-use areas where the tech could be misused. So they're trying to build guardrails directly into how the model generates responses in risky domains. That appears to be the approach. It paints a much more nuanced picture than just, you know, full speed ahead, ignore the risks. Regulators are definitely worried about the gap between capability and governance, but OpenAI seems to be taking some technical safety steps internally. It doesn't end the debate, but it adds complexity. Absolutely. Okay, let's push back on some of the broader ways GPT-5 has been framed. One big one. Frontier AI, now for everyone. Is it really? Well, it's sort of for everyone. That router system does try to give casual users a mix, right? Fast answers for easy stuff, deeper thinking for hard stuff. But OpenAI themselves admit they put gates on risky behaviors. They apply enhanced safeguards especially on that more powerful GPT-5 thinking track, particularly for things with high potential for misuse like bio or chem capabilities. So it's not like everyone gets the raw, unfiltered frontier model. No. It seems more like curated access, managed access, yeah. which you know suggests they're thinking about risk management, even if people debate whether it's enough. Okay. What about the other framing? OpenAI is recklessly chasing RSI. Well, as we just discussed, the evidence from their launch, the deception monitors, the safe completions focus seems to directly contradict that idea of recklessness. It shows they're at least working on control mechanisms. Exactly. It doesn't mean the control problem is solved or mm -hmm. that long-term risks aren't real, but it suggests they aren't simply ignoring control. It complicates that reckless pursuit narrative. So given all this nuance, the router, the benchmarks, the safety measures, what should we actually be watching for next? What are the practical things that matter? I think one really crucial area is router transparency and stability. This might sound technical, but it's key. Why? Will OpenAI tell us how the router works? Will they offer stable versions or configurations so outside labs can actually do reliable testing and reproduce results? Or will it just be this constantly shifting black box? Right. If it's always changing under the hood without documentation, how can anyone truly evaluate progress or compare it fairly? It really impacts external research and, frankly, trust. Okay, router transparency. What else? The chat GPT agent side of things. The AI acting autonomously. Beyond just fancy demos. Yeah, the reliability of it actually using a computer on its own in the wild. What about uh, sandbox escapes? Could it break out of its controlled environment? Or subtly leak data. Or find clever ways around its safety rules policy bypasses. Lab tests are one thing. OpenAI's safety tables show improvements there, sure. Yeah. But how does it really perform when millions of people are using it in unpredictable ways? The real world results matter far more. The field testing, not just the lab. Absolutely. And finally, let's bring it back to that huge potential valuation, $500 billion. 
How does the pressure of justifying that number interact with the technology's costs and limits? That's a great question. That drive for valuation combined with the real world squeeze on infrastructure, hmm. you know, the need for massive power, tons of expensive GPU. Yeah, the resources are finite. They can really shape product decisions. Maybe they'll route more queries to cheaper, smaller mini models to save costs. Maybe they'll apply stricter guardrails, not just for safety, but to manage computational expense. Which could subtly change the user experience, right? Trading off some capability for better profit margins. Exactly. And those kinds of changes, driven by economics, might mean the GPT-5 people experience day to day is different from the ones shown in the glossy benchmarks. It's a reminder that economics shapes AI too. So wrapping this up, where does this leave us? The economist might be right that GPT-5 isn't the singularity arriving tomorrow. No sci-fi leap just yet. But calling it just an update feels like an undersell too. We've seen it's more like a fundamental systems upgrade. Definitely. That routered family of models is a big shift. Plus the stronger focus on coding, on agentic abilities, and that rethinking of how safety is trained into the model. So it seems the big story here, at least in the near term, isn't really about AGI suddenly appearing. No, I think it's more about whether this complex one-button, many-brains design can actually deliver expert-level work reliably, safely, and governably at scale. And critically, will OpenAI make it transparent enough, stable enough, for the rest of us researchers, policymakers, users, to genuinely understand what it can do and what it can't? That's the core issue going forward, I think. Measurement, transparency, stability. Can we trust what we can't reliably measure? A crucial question to ponder as AI keeps evolving. How much will we really get to see inside the brains behind the button? And how will the answer to that shape our trust, our use, and our future with these incredibly powerful systems? Thanks for joining us for this look inside GPT-5.